Now, this is an example, the, ignore the label here. It says nodular fasciitis, but actually, we're dealing with a special variation of nodular fasciitis. So this is does have all the features of nodular fasciitis. We got beautiful example of myxoid cystic degeneration. This is just really, really classic and nice, perfect. So there's the cystic degeneration. Also, it's a small lesion. And look, it's arising right, this is nice, you don't always see this, but it's arising right off of the fascia. This band of dense, regular connective tissue here is fascia. Uh, tendon would look the same way, it just depends where you're located in the body. Sometimes you don't see the fascia next to nodular fasciitis because the lesion is pushed up into the subcutis and the surgeon didn't go all the way down to the fascia when they took it out. So in this case though, you can see it coming right off of the fascia and growing up into the subcutis. We got the nice myxoid cystic change, loose background, spindle to stellate cells, hemorrhage, all the stuff we talked about. But there's also some extra stuff here that we're gonna talk about. Look at these big plump round cells that have large round nuclei and prominent nucleoli. They look like little eyeballs staring back at us. Kind of scary looking, huh? So these have been called ganglion-like cells. They look kind of like the ganglion cells you, uh, you see in a nerve ganglion. But in this case, they're actually um, a variation of, of fibroblast or myofibroblast, and they're just scattered around here in a lesion that otherwise looks like nodular fasciitis. When you see a bunch of these ganglion-like cells, in a lesion that looks like nodular fasciitis, we call it proliferative fasciitis. Or if you put this down in the skeletal muscle, you could call it proliferative myositis. It's the same kind of substance, just different name that we give it based on where it's localized. But if it's in the subcutis or at the fascia level, you can call it proliferative fasciitis. In either case, it's a benign process, so the name that we give it is not super important. Um, it's just to know that this is benign. And it's really important here because these cells look scary. Um, and again, you see these big cells with big nucleoli like that, and then you see mitoses like right there. Look, there's a mitosis. There's these double eyeballs staring back at us. How do we know this is not a sarcoma? Well, I'll tell you, the thing that helps me the most is a few things. One, the ganglion-like cells are scattered and spaced out from each other. They're not in a big cellular sheet, okay? Although actually in pediatric cases of proliferative fasciitis and proliferative myositis, sometimes they can get kind of cellular and those are a little scary, but outside the scope of what we're talking about today. So I like the fact that the ganglion-like cells are scattered and spaced out from each other in a loose myxoid background. I like the fact that elsewhere you have all these other features that are just like what you'd see in nodular fasciitis, spindle distellate myofibroblasts, a hemorrhage, the myxoid cystic degeneration, the small size of the lesion, all of that stuff. So seeing the scattered ganglion cells in the background of nodular fasciitis, that's what helps reassure me that what we're dealing with here is just proliferative fasciitis and not some sort of malignancy. But it's really important and it's, a, it's, an easy, it's an easy mistake to make if you don't recognize this lesion. So burn that into your mind. This is proliferative fasciitis.